Today, I am excited to share the Word of God with you, so let's get started. Pride is behind all lack of love, all indifference to the needs of others and their feelings, and their weaknesses. It is the source of all hasty and critical judgments. All manifestations of temper, all touchiness and irritation, all feelings of bitterness and all unforgiveness come from a spirit of pride. Now, before I start talking to you about humility, I want to make it clear that humility is not a weak, wimpy, go around, you know, with some supposed look of humility on your face all the time. To be honest, I think that just is annoying to God. <laughs> the place to be humble is in your heart and in your mind. And if you have a humble heart and a humble mind, then it's going to come across in a right, godly way. A humble person doesn't think more highly of themselves than they ought to, but they don't think lowly of themselves either. They really just don't have themselves on their mind that much. They know who they are in Christ, and in Him, they're bold and courageous. God has called us to be bold and to be courageous. But that doesn't mean to be obnoxious and to walk all over people and to hurt other people. So true humility will be bold in Christ. And I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about being bolder and especially being bolder in prayer. We're nothing in ourselves, but we're everything in Christ. I can do nothing without him, but I can do anything that he wants me to do through him. Come on now. I can't do it without him, but I can do whatever I need to do through him. Can I tell you that you are stronger than you think you are? Get the words I can't out of your repertoire of words that you use. And don't be going around saying it's too hard, I can't. You can do whatever you need to do in this life if you lean on Christ and trust him to help you. Amen. Amen. You can be in a very, very difficult situation and you can be there with a smile on your face and you can be there and be a blessing to other people while you are hurting yourself. I think I'm going to say that again. Because see, sometimes we just think if we're in a difficult situation, then the whole world has to stop until our problem gets solved. And that's just not true. While you're hurting, God will use you to help somebody else if you'll let him. And that's one of the quickest ways to receive your own healing. While you're hurting, you can be in a very difficult situation and you can be there with a smile on your face and a good attitude. And while you're waiting for your breakthrough, you can and should be a blessing to other people. Somebody say amen. amen. In Ephesians 3.12, the apostle Paul said, because of our faith in him, we dare to have the boldness, the courage, and the confidence of free access and unreserved approach to God with freedom and without fear. Now here's Paul who says, I'm the chief of all sinners, but yet he's also saying, in Christ, because of knowing who we are in him, we can have boldness and access to the throne of God to go boldly before the throne and ask God for radical things in our life that we don't deserve and probably shouldn't have, but we can ask him because he's good. Maybe some of you are not asking for enough. I'll tell them you didn't like it. <laughs> Maybe some of you are not asking for enough. You know, several years ago, I got this urge one day, and I believe we get Holy Ghost urges. Yeah. Amen? Don't push those down. If it's a fleshly urge, push it down. But if it's a Holy Ghost urge, let it come up. Let it come out. And as I was praying one day, 
I got this urge to pray that God would let me teach the word to every human being on the planet. Now, just hang on. My mind said, that is crazy. Nobody can do that. And then the devil said, and who do you think you are? The enemy does not want you to pray bold prayers. You ought to pray something so big that you're not even sure God can answer it. And I guess that's kind of the way I felt about that that day. God, I want to teach the word to every person on the planet. Well, we're not getting them all yet, but there's a whole bunch. Our program is translated into 83, 85 different languages now. Translated. I don't know how in the world God does it. This is what I do. And he gives us all these wonderful people that make all this other stuff happen and all these wonderful ministry partners around the world, even like other ministries who partner with us in getting these translations and making these things happen. It's important for people to hear the gospel of Christ in their own language. Even if English is a second language for them, they need it in their own language because they can relax and receive it that way. So we're on television across the Middle East, Africa, India, Asia, Mongolia, I mean places that I wouldn't even know how to get to. And the word works in people's lives no matter what language they speak or what culture that they're from. Everybody needs Jesus. So through the internet, through satellites, through television, through radio, through printed material, through books, the gospel is available to pretty much the whole entire planet now. And I'm not foolish enough to think that they're all watching me every day. I'm not that full of myself. But I, I would, let me tell you one thing. I would rather pray big prayers and get part of it than to pray little prayers and get all of it. Come on. So I'm challenging you to know you don't deserve it. That's the first qualification to go boldly before God. You know you don't deserve it. I don't deserve what I'm getting ready to ask you. I don't deserve it. And I'm not coming in my name, I'm coming in Jesus' name. And I know that I've done a lot of things wrong, but you said that you forgive me and you forget them, so I'm not even gonna bother talking to you about my past. Come on. Stop talking to God about something he forgot about a long time ago. You don't need to be talking to God about your past. You need to talk about your future. How we begin in life is not nearly as important as how we finish. And I had a lousy start, but I'm determined to have a good finish. How about you? Okay, now listen. You have not because you ask not. God's not getting mad at you for asking. The worst thing that can happen if you ask for something you're not supposed to have is you just won't get it. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm not suggesting asking for a bunch of carnal, stupid stuff, but start asking God to use you. Use me, God. Use me to help somebody else. <laughs> Hebrews 4, 15, and 16 are wonderful scriptures. We have a high priest. We do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and liabilities and infirmities and the assaults of temptation. But one who has been tempted in every point just like we are yet without sinning. Whatever you are going through, whatever your temptation might be, Jesus understands it because he also was tempted, yet he never sinned. Isn't that awesome? How many of you especially, I think women are especially like this, you just, you just want to feel that somebody gets you, that they understand you, you know? I finally told Dave, I, even if you don't understand, just lie to me and tell me you do. And so now one of his favorite things is I understand and 
I just pretend like he does and it makes me happy. Amen. But Jesus understands. And I love that about him, that no matter what I'm going through on my weirdest of most weird days, he understands. He gets you. Amen. Verse 16 says, let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we might receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need. Appropriate help, well-timed help coming just when we need it. When you have not behaved well, don't draw away from Jesus, run to him. You can't hide from God. And believe it or not, he is great at helping people who don't deserve it. <laughs> but you have not because you ask not. So start asking. Learn how to pray your way through the day. Don't just pray for yourself, but pray for other people too. The righteous are bold as a lion. I love that. Now, pride is extremely dangerous. And it's defined as to be lifted up, to be high-minded, to indulge in self-esteem or self-confidence and to glory in self-achievement. I hope you noticed how many times the word self is used in that definition. Self, 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 self. The Bible says if we're gonna follow Christ, we need to take up our cross and follow him, forgetting ourselves. That's the cross that we are to carry, is to get ourselves off of our mind, be Christ-minded, and let him flow through us. We die to self and live for him. Amen. Want to hear more from Joyce on this topic? We've got you covered. Visit us in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org today.